What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and South Park joining the Pandaverse is officially here. And I've watched it in full with a nice cup of coffee in my hands, and by god it was glorious to witness. An amazing achievement in every way, Pandaverse perfectly encapsulates a lot of the reasons why fans are tired of this nonsense. And dare I say, this is a special that rivals the greats at times too. I guess spoilers for the entire special since I can't really talk about this without spoiling it. But Pandaverse ended up doing exactly what we all hoped it would, and then some. It took the Walt Disney Company to task and ripped them a new one so hard it's going to be impossible for Bob Iger or Kathleen Kennedy to not confront or be interviewed about it at some point. South Park basically tackles Disney and also makes fun of the tired concept of multiverses. Which I don't know about you guys, but I am sick of that entire idea already. Multiverses just suck, they lessen the stakes of stories, and they ruin any reason to care if characters die, since they can just pluck another one from another dimension, no problem. South Park explains that multiverses exist, but they thankfully also make fun of it as well and call it lazy. It turns out the diverse women of color versions of Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Kenny are not AI, but actual living, breathing versions that exist in their own insufferable parallel dimension. Cartman ends up having dreams of being a strong black female version of himself. And while his friends don't believe him, Cartman ends up getting sucked into a portal and swaps places with a black woman Cartman. Honestly, I think when Cartman is in this diverse version of South Park, it's where the episode is the strongest. Seeing race-swapped versions of every character is not only hilarious, but shines a mirror on woke Hollywood, and reveals to them just how insufferably ridiculous their recent ideas and movies have been. Cartman is exhausted and confused for the majority of the episode, and he's basically all of us in this special. He's surrounded by tokenized version of characters we love, and it's so glorious to see South Park tackling this in the way that they do. Honestly, if Matt Stone and Trey Parker ever decided to make another game, in the same vein as Stick of Truth or Fractured But Whole, I think a Pandaverse game would be a very smart idea. An entire game pandering to showcase how ridiculous these concepts are could be incredible to see, if it was done in the same vein as Stick or Butt. But anyway, what I loved most about this episode was its jabs at Walt Disney and its executives the most. Having Kathleen Kennedy herself be the main villain of the special is like the most delicious slice of pie South Park could ever serve to me. It was like being validated for all my hard work making videos and explaining all the things I do being justified by people I respect. And having Kathleen Kennedy say stuff like make them gay and lame was just... My god, it was so good. I loved it so much. I also loved how black female woman Cartman's entire motive wasn't even to correct her place in the universe. All she wanted to do was play Baldur's Gate 3, which was great too. And I mean as someone who's beaten Baldur's Gate 3, I don't blame her, the game is awesome. The best part of the episode is when Cartman and Kathleen Kennedy are sitting down in Shitty Walk, but it's called Shitty Woke, which is amazing. And having Kathleen Kennedy explain that the reason everything sucks is because Disney has discovered a magical multiverse stone MacGuffin that's called the Pander Stone that would allow Disney to create the same films over and over again while appealing to everyone. Upon its discovery, Kathleen Kennedy would use this Pander Stone to usher in a new era of Walt Disney creations, pandering to all social criterias and shattering the ceiling of what can and can't be done with franchises. This brought about an era of woke resurgence, a golden age of bright, golden, luminous light that spanned the entire Disney kingdom. But like every age, there must eventually come a time for it to end. And the Pander Stone becomes corrupt, its power abused by those who would seek its use to pander so goddamn hard that eventually what was once considered golden just would become rancid, decayed, and ruined. This ends up opening a portal through the multiverse to call forth another Kathleen Kennedy, in the form of what seems to be the worst aspects of both Cartman and Kathleen fuse into a single body. The ultimate woke maniac, Kathleen Kennedy, but even woker. They actually don't give this Kathleen a unique name, but like, she's basically Kennedy, but far worse, which is just, ugh, no thanks. 
Anyway, this explanation basically cements that the reason why Disney movies suck so much balls these days is because of hubris and the disconnected nature between what Disney's executives think audiences want and what they actually desire. The Pander Stone is ripe for a video game version, man. It's such a great concept. An annoyingly on-brand MacGuffin controlled by insanely out-of-touch executives who will just keep remaking the same garbage over and over, farming audiences for profits while offering nothing new whatsoever. It's so great. In a lot of ways, the pandering of companies is akin to a multiverse, in which these alternate versions are simply worse alternatives to what we already know. In a way, South Park validates Disney's decisions by confirming that while we may all be tired of companies pushing woke garbage down our throats, these race gender swapped characters exist nonetheless. But of course, like anything in life, nothing is made equal. And South Park pushes this by proving how the fact the Pandaverse versions even exist show just how easy intellectual properties can fall victim to its nefarious ways. The episode comes to a conclusion where Cartman and Kathleen Kennedy agree that they were both in the wrong and that each side was but a shadow of the other destined to meet on this faithful day at the shitty walk in South Park of all places. Having reconciled their differences, some inexplicable Disney-like magic, the likes of which we used to love, whisks Cartman back to his real world. And Kathleen Kennedy is able to return to Disney proper, confirming she's learned from her errors and wants to create original content only going forward. It also ends with that weird Cartman-Kathleen Kennedy variant returning to their own world where everything is made of, like, exoskeletons and flesh. And Cartman Kennedy lays in their bed as their insect mother variant feeds them cereal that looks and talks like Kyle, Stan, and Kenny. I don't think we've seen the last of Darth Kennedy, but overall, man, the episode is just phenomenal. There's also an entire subplot about AI and the many adults of South Park being angry that they went to college to study stuff, that relies too heavily on technology. And the handymen basically become billionaires because everyone is useless. Which is also just as good as the main plot in my opinion. Honestly, after watching the special, it makes me wonder if Trey and Matt maybe are frequent watchers of content similar to what I make. I mean, they have to. They hit the nail so well on the head that I would be amazed if they made this without taking in the feedback of YouTubers who talk about this sort of stuff already. But generally speaking, Panderverse is amazing. It's one of the best things I've seen all year, and it genuinely feels refreshing to watch in a time where everything is gay, diverse, and race-swapped. It feels as if the collective whims of a tired fandom can unite under the banner of this one episode. And I know it likely won't happen, but I really do hope Bob Iger and Kathleen Kennedy end up watching the episode themselves, so they can see just how ridiculous the absolute state of their company and its reputation has become. What's also weirdly timed is the same day Panderverse released, Disney decided to release a new movie still from the Snow White remake, which gets teased in the background very close to the Panderstone too. But what's very weird is that the characters surrounding Rachel Zegler's Snow White look absolutely nothing like the actors we saw playing the supposed seven magical creatures when stuff first leaked. The movie also got delayed till 2025, which makes me wonder if Disney is actually taking the criticisms of the fanbase to heart, and Snow White will instead actually be a more authentic remake than we previously thought. Cause look, I guess those dwarf-like creatures surrounding Rachel Zegler could still be magical creatures and not dwarves, but I don't know about you, but those look like dwarves to me. I think Disney knows the movie has no chance of making a profit if it comes out in the state it was going to, and honestly, if this image tells me anything, it's that our voices and criticisms are finally being heard. Like, okay, I'm not saying Snow White is saved or it'll be amazing or anything, but I have to give credit when it's due, and this image looks like Snow White, sort of, at least. At least more so than whatever the fresh hell those earlier stills look like anyway. And I could be wrong, of course, but is it just me, or do the dwarves actually all look like males too? Is Disney actually listening to us? Are we actually going to be getting a remake of Snow White that isn't garbage and actually respects the source material? I'm going to stop myself from getting too much hope, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Especially once an official trailer drops, but it doesn't stop there either, since Marvel is also now promoting the Marvels? with Avengers music and they're even using endgame clips to drum up hype. 
It's so brutal seeing Disney releasing the Snow White thing and now this Marvel's fake Avengers Endgame connection the same day that Pandaverse drops. It just solidifies that what they're doing is not for genuine reasons and the fact that they've been exposed this hard by South Park is hilarious to me. And the Disney dunking just keeps coming, dude. Literal moments ago, as I was writing this video, Bounding Into Comics posted an article titled, After Kathleen Kennedy admitted the company had taken the fun out of making Star Wars, director Sean Levy says his mandate is to create a movie with fun and warmth. The amount of course correcting and sudden media spins coming out of Disney the same day as Pandaverse. Dude, this can't be a coincidence. I'm going to become a conspiracy theorist right now, but there's no way that all of this is coming out the same freaking day that Pandaverse does. Disney knew that South Park would bend them over backwards and shoot some loads of common sense into their glory holes. So they're probably doing all this on purpose in order to tell people who've watched Pandaverse that, hey guys, we're still Disney, we're listening and we like you, please don't believe what South Park is saying. Of course it could all just be a coincidence, unless it isn't. Otherwise, they wouldn't be ensuring quotes like this one from Kennedy are presented where she says, What I was so taken with is how much fun we were having. It amounted to this moment of realization. I do think a little bit of fun has gone out of making these gigantic movies. The business, the stakes, everything that's been infused in the last 10 years or so. There's a kind of spinatity and good time that we have to be careful to preserve. I keep holding on to, it better be fun. What the hell is going on right now? Now Sean Levy, who's currently directing Deadpool 3, is also writing his Star Wars movie, which is in the early stages. Listen to what he has to say, and again, remember that Disney is purposely promoting this potential new film to have fun and warmth, which are not things I would use to explain current Star Wars anyway, and I quote. Kathleen Kennedy and Dave Filoni and all the kind of the brain trust at Lucasfilm they're trying to juggle and coordinate a lot of pieces in film and in television. But the spirit of Kathy's outreach to me which was your movies have a consistent sense of fun and warmth. And that's what we want the Sean Levy Star Wars movie to be. That's what we want Star Wars to be. I'm running with that mandate. It's the only way I know how to approach the work anyway. So to play in that sandbox, it's a blast. And every day just cooking up ideas. It's ongoing. It's a long runway. Listen, we've seen different tones succeed. We've seen Andor and its strength. We've seen The Force Awakens and its strengths. We've seen Ryan Johnson's Star Wars movies and its strengths. For me, and again, I can only make things that flow from me in an intuitive way. For me, I guess this reconnects to episodes 4, 5, and 6. It is a combination of swashbuckling fun, swagger, but also a depth of relationship connections. What are you willing to sacrifice for, either a person or an idea, and in the best Star Wars movies, it's both. So I feel extremely empowered. We are in the early days, unfortunately, because the development process was abruptly paused due to the WGA strike. But I feel very empowered to trust my instincts in the development of this story and movie, end quote. What the f- So you're telling me? The same day that Pandaverse rips Disney a new one. They announced Snow White is now going to be more authentic to the original. The Marvels magically has a connection to the Avengers. And is totally not a girl boss bonanza. And now Disney wants to make fun Star Wars movies that prioritize happiness. Nah, dude. No, no way this is not all a PR stunt. Disney is trying to play 4D chess with our hopes and dreams. I see what you're doing, Kathleen. She takes her hand off of the pander stone for one second and suddenly things seem like they're all going back to normal. We've all been burned before, Kathy. I don't trust you. You can't fool me. And we're seeing alternative media popping up already combating the decisions of Disney. Remember the Daily Wire Snow White movie? Where Brett Cooper is set to play Snow White? Honestly, feels like Disney retconning their woke nonsense and their version is a direct response to that movie existing. And I mean, look how easy it is to market stuff when you're not ran by idiots with this article titled, Snow White and the Evil Queen actress Brett Cooper says film will not be a Make America Great Again conservative movie will focus on timeless value of original story. And look how easy it is to promote your movie and ensure it's a slam dunk with Brett Cooper saying, and I quote, People don't want propaganda on the other side. They just want propaganda-free entertainment, and that really is the main point. We're not trying to turn Snow White into something it's not. We're not trying to turn Snow White into a MAGA conservative movie. 
We're just trying to represent the values that Snow White is based in, the timeless values that we all loved growing up that are sadly being forgotten in this new Disney adaptation. We don't give a crap about being woke, but more importantly, our creative team actually gives a crap about the source material. They want to tell the original story with the values and the themes that made the Brothers Grimm fairy tale so famous and important to begin with. Values like love and kindness and friendship and inner beauty versus vanity. And romance for Pete's sake because apparently that's missing in 2023, end quote. Like you see how easy it is to promote your stuff when you don't talk down to your audience, Disney. Also, apparently some people are mad that Cooper Snow White has long hair, but she points out in the Grimm story version that Snow White is depicted with longer hair. And look at those little wee bastard dwarves. God damn it, Disney is really trying to salvage what they can with that retcon, aren't they? It's still crazy that they went with CGI dwarves in the end instead of just hiring, you know, actual little people. But I guess we can thank ladder kicking Peter Dinklage for that one. And I think to end this video, we should listen to what the Daily Wire's co-founder says about Disney and why it's lost its values. And what he says here perfectly lines up with why the Panderverse exists to begin with, and I quote, Look, we know we aren't what Disney is today, but we hope in time we might become what they were once upon a time, a little studio with big ideas and the courage to chase them. Walt Disney embodied the American spearment of entrepreneurship and innovation. He risked everything to build his dream. One of his greatest risks and greatest achievements was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Critics at the time called it Disney's folly. They were certain it would be a flop. It was 400% over budget and it would bankrupt the entire company if it didn't succeed. But it did succeed. It went on to become one of the top grossing films of all time. Everything you see today from Disney was made possible by Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So there's no better example of Disney's disregard for their own heritage or their disregard for their own audience than their current remake of their own classic film. Walt once said about Snow White, to me, I thought it was the perfect story. I had the sympathetic dwarves, I had the prince and the girl. The romance, I just thought it was a perfect story. Unfortunately, the company Disney founded doesn't agree with their founder and visionary. They're remaking their own iconic film nearly a hundred years later. They've decided to make some key changes. While Disney still uses Walt's name, they've all but abandoned his legacy. Instead of telling stories about timeless truth, what the ancient fairy tales were all about, Disney's Snow White is an apology for their past, and will expose children to the popular but destructive lies of the current moment. It's a story about a princess and a prince, about beauty and vanity, about love and its power to raise us from death to life. It's our own adaptation of an ancient fairy tale. It's coming in 2024 and it's called Snow White and the Evil Queen, end quote. And there you have it. Through sheer utter hubris and delirious pushes by Disney themselves, not only are they being outplayed in their home field advantage, but their pandering has opened the gates of oblivion itself. The Panderverse has exposed Disney down to its nerves, showing us all just how insane it really looks. And there's nothing that Kathleen Kennedy or Bob Iger can do at this very moment that's going to change that. But if the announcements they've made today show anything, it's that they're listening. But remember that they're only adapting not because they want to, but because they're desperate. And maybe one day Disney will seal away the Panderstone for good, but for now, thank you for watching dear viewer, subscribe and like the video to help the channel out. I'm thankful every day for being able to do this and it's all because of your support. So I thank you from the bottom of my dark cynical heart that you're here. Thank you, really, it means a lot. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.